Right. So today we have Simone Rota tell us about a recipe for genuine lines, one from symmetries in N equals three S faults. Take it away. Thanks. And thanks a lot for the invitation. Um, so today I would like to talk about uh, some work that I did with uh, my supervisor, Antonio Mahiti, as well as uh, David Morgante and Antoine Pasternak, which are in uh, Milan with me, and uh, Valdo Tatis Chef, which is in Heidelberg. So um, discuss the procedure that we use to compute uh, one for symmetries in these uh, theories, and then I will uh, uh, discuss uh, the results. Um, Okay, I'll do like this. Uh, so an equal theory is in four dimension, uh, of course, a large amount of uh, supersymmetry. And so for this reason, just based on uh, symmetry argument, uh, there are some general properties that we can understand about them. And these were understood by uh, 2015. On the other hand, these are necessarily strongly coupled than Lagrangian theories. So, and this is because um, if you try to write a Lagrangian that is invariant under n equals three, then uh, you only super multiplet that you can use uh, is uh, equivalent to the n equals four super multiplet, and all the um, interactions that you can write those are to be also invariant under n equals four. So, uh, nevertheless, uh, n equals three uh, SCFTs that are not n equals four, but these are necessarily strongly coupled. So, essentially, the only way that you have to access them and to study them is by uh, using non perturbative techniques, non perturbative tools. And so I think it is very interesting, especially in these theories, to consider the global symmetries. And so these theories have, of course, an equal three supersymmetry with an associated R symmetry, which is SU3 times U1. But it is a general result uh, among the ones by Aron and Elkitiev that uh, there can be no other continuous global symmetries. And nevertheless, there can be discrete symmetries. And in general, you can consider discrete higher form symmetries in the sense of uh, the generalized global symmetry paper by Gaiotto, Kapustin, Komarkowski, and Cyber. And so, in particular, today we will uh, study the possible discrete one for symmetries for a family of n equals three SCFTs, which are the asphalt uh, um, theories. So, one for symmetries are um, symmetries generated by information by uh, two surface operators, and the objects that are charged under these symmetries are uh, one-dimensional operators, so line operators. So you can think of them as a um, generalization of a Wilson and Tooth line that you can have, uh, say, in, in a gauge theory. Um, so let me say that uh, um, 10 days before our paper appeared in the archive, there was another independent uh, uh, paper that uh, uh, studied one for symmetries of s for CFTs, and this is due to Itirej, Garcia Tebaria, Heidenreich, and Sebastian Roche. And Segarstein gave a very nice uh, presentation of their approach uh, two weeks ago here at the Quiver meeting. So I uh, would suggest uh, uh, viewing that if you weren't there, if you're interested in this topic. And today we will uh, uh, see a different procedure, the same from a counterpart point of view, uh, which you can think of as a brain engineering perspective. And uh, we find that uh, when both analyses uh, overlap, we find a good uh, result, uh, a good match for the results. So our analysis um, exploits the fact that uh, n equals three as CFTs, as full CFTs, uh, have a Coulomb branch. And in general, for theories that are a Coulomb phase, our general prescription for computing the Waffle symmetries was proposed by uh, Garcia Zbaria and Del Zotto. And the main idea is that um, you can move to a generic point of the Coulomb branch and compute the one for symmetries in that generic point. And then you can move back to some singular points where the non-trivial dynamic happens. And about for symmetries being generated by um, dimension two topological operator should be stable under the formations. And so let me, now I will quickly review how this works. So on a generic point of the Coulomb branch, the low energy theory is uh, a gauge theory U1 to the R, where R is the rank of the theory by definition. Um, and in general, you will also have a massive charge state. And the idea is that when you go to a non-generic point of the Coulomb branch, some of the states will become losses and give rise to the interesting dynamic. And so we should include them in our discussion. And this state will have, take a magnetic charge under all the U1 factors. Uh, 
so a generic state uh, gamma will have charge uh, uh, EI MI, which I will draw, uh, write in a vector as shown here. And um, if you consider all the possible charges associated to all the massive charge state that you have in your theory, the set of charges will uh, form a lattice, which is called the charge lattice, and I will call this gamma. Furthermore, there, are, there is additional structure on this lattice, which is given by the Dirac pairing, which is an anti-symmetric uh, map from gamma to gamma to Z. Anti-symmetric non-degenerate non map. And the main result uh, for our purpose from uh, the paper by Garcia Sebari and Del Zotto is that the notion of uh, the charge lattice with the associated Dirac pairing is enough to compute the one for symmetry and to compute the spectrum of line operators that are charged under the one for symmetries. So let's see how this works. So let's start before uh, without, uh, in the absence of massive charge state. So we just have a R gauge theory. And in this case, for each U1 factor, there is a one for symmetry, which is U1 electric times U1 magnetic. Where U1 electric uh, counts the Wilson line, with respect to this one factor and you are magnetic cancer the tooth lines. So a generic uh, Wilson tooth line will uh, have uh, charges uh, uh, for symmetry that I write with the capital E and capital M to distinguish them between, from the charges of the local uh, operators. Now we want to include the massive charge state, as I said, and this has two effects on uh, the spectrum of possible lines in your theory. The first effect is a constraint on the possible charges, which is due to, to mutual locality conditions with the, the local state. So you consider a local state, gamma, and the line L. And if you move the local state uh, around the line L, the system will get uh, a phase due to the aron bomb effect. And the, this phase is uh, 2 pi i times the Dirac pairing between gamma and uh, L. So in order for this line to be well-defined in your theory, you need uh, this phase to be one. And this means that uh, the Dirac pairing between uh, any local state gamma and uh, a line must be an integer. So this constraint, uh, as I said, the possible charges that a line can have, and the set of possible uh, lines that uh, do satisfy this constraint uh, against form a lattice, which is called the line lattice. Uh, sometimes this is called the uh, defect group as well in, uh, in the literature. But we are not done yet, meaning that we cannot uh, just take all these lines and add them to our theory, because in general, two of these lines will not be mutually local between each other. And for, for a similar reason as uh, above, this, uh, if you include them both, they will not be uh, well defined. So in general, you must choose a, a set, a subset of uh, lines that are all mutually local between each other. And then you can add uh, simultaneously two lines uh, to your theories. Um, such a choice, so a choice of uh, a maximal sublattice of lines, uh, we'll call uh, gamma max. And in general, there will be different choices. And now we can uh, see what the one for symmetry group is. So at the beginning, the one for symmetry was uh, u1 times u1 for each factor of uh, the Coulomb branch gauge group. But in general, adding a massive charge state will break uh, this down to a discrete subgroup. And uh, you can find that uh, the remaining one for symmetry that is not broken by the presence of charge state is given by this uh, gamma max, where again is uh, a choice of maximal uh, lattice of mutually local lines quotient by the charge lattice. Um, so, see that the non-trivial information about uh, the lines in a theory is actually given by this line, this uh, uh, lattice, modulo the insertion of possible local operators, so modulo the charge lattice. And this is because if you have a line, uh, say, with charge L, you can always construct a line with charge L plus gamma by inserting the operator gamma at some point in the world line. So this is the second effect of adding um, charge state in your theory. And it's such simplification because now we can just consider equivalence classes of lines with respect to 
adding, uh, inserting local operators along them. And this is quite a, a great simplification because gamma max in general is an infinite lattice, which has the same dimensionality as uh, the charge lattice. But when you consider only equivalence classes, generally we'll find uh, a finite lattice and uh, the dimensionality will, uh, uh, can be uh, lower than uh, the charge lattice. Um, so just to make, make it concrete, let us look at uh, this concept in a uh, well-understood theory, which is N equals four uh, super Hermes with H group uh, SU2. And in this case, we have a Lagrangian description. And uh, for example, you can find analysis of the uh, one for symmetries and the possible uh, global structure in the classical reading between the line papers by Aroni, Seiberg, and Tachikawa. So in this case, the charge lattice, so the lattice of, of uh, local operators is uh, spanned by the charges of the W bosons and the monopoles. And uh, the line lattice uh, modulo insertion of local operators turns out to be a two by two lattice. So these are, there are four possible lines that you can include in your theory, but you cannot include them all at once because they are not generally mutually local between each other. And uh, you find that there are three possible choices of lines that you can add simultaneously. And, uh, and it, it is customary to do them as I, as I did here. So the um, gray circles are all the possible genuine lines, while the, the yellow dots are the lines that you choose to add uh, to a given choice of uh, the lines that are included in a given choice of um, maximal sub lattice. So for gauge theories, it turns out that uh, these different choices are associated to different global structure for the gauge group. In an addition, possible uh, addition of uh, discrete theta terms, which are topological terms that you can add to the action. And um, when we move to the um, non-Lagrangian theories, to so the ASPOL theories, we will not have uh, an interpretation in terms of uh, gauge groups because we don't have a Lagrangian description, but still we will have uh, different choices of uh, lattices of lines. And I will still call the different choices uh, global structure, just borrowing the nomenclature. But what you should really have in mind is a picture like this, where I can have different choices of uh, a maximal set of lines that I can add simultaneously to the theory. OK, uh, so um, to conclude this first little part of my talk, um, and moving to the actual N equals three theories. What uh, we let's say the take home point uh, for uh, this talk is that uh, we can compute the one for uh, the fan force symmetries. And the only information that we actually need uh, will be the charge lattice gamma and the associated Dirac pairing. So, um, okay, so um, maybe uh, any questions up to here? Okay. Okay, so let me finally introduce the theories that are the topic of this talk. Um, the theories that I will consider are uh, so-called uh, S-fold SCFTs. And these were the first examples of uh, N equals three SCFTs in four dimension that are not N equals four. These were introduced in our classic paper uh, in Sietz, Barria and uh, Regalado. And you can think of these theories as uh, the low energy world volume theories of a stack of uh, RDT brains that the uh, probe that is called the S-fold singularity in type 2B. So this would be a space time uh, 3, 1. It will be the physical space time in four dimension times uh, C3 mod ZK, uh, where the ZK question also involves a non trivial uh, element of the S duality group. Okay, so K will be an element of uh, SL2Z. Now, more precisely, uh, these theories can be defined uh, in uh, F-theory where on a, um, on a singularity of this type where the F-theory torus has a non-trivial monodromy valued in SL to Z as you go around uh, the non-trivial cycle. But for the purpose of this talk, uh, it will be enough to consider this, uh, this uh, uh, simplified and um, this simple description type to be where um, the effect of having a non-trivial monodromy for the FTR torus is encoded in the action of, uh, uh, in an action of uh, SL2Z duality as you go around the non-trivial cycle of the S-fold. 
Okay, so this uh, element rho k of uh, SL2z must generate a cyclic subgroup of SL2z and for k equals two, three, four, and six. Um, the k equals one, uh, for k equals one, uh, there is no real projection. And for k equals two, it turns out that uh, uh, you preserve n equals four supersymmetry, and this will correspond to the projection of an S for the type to be. For today, the interesting values of k are three, four, and six. And the element of SL2Z that uh, generated this static subgroup uh, are shown here in, in this matrices. Mm, so, Estebaria and Regalado show that uh, this setup preserves 12 supercharges, and so this corresponds to n equals three in four dimension. And furthermore, you, we know that uh, the SL2, uh, the S-duality group SL2Z acts non trivially on the axiodilaton. And so for this projection, the axodinoton must, uh, must be at a fixed point under the uh, And this turns out to be uh, e to the 2 pi i over k. So this um, setup defines an infinite family of n equals three theories that uh, is the family that are called, that are called the s fold the SCFTs. And this is parameterized by the value of k, uh, which will be equal to three, four, and six. And the number of DT brains are, which will be, will be equal to the rank of your theory. And also, um, Aronin Tachikawa found out that uh, there is an additional choice of uh, discrete torsion, which is uh, non trivial flux for the B2 and C2 type to be fields. But uh, in this talk, I will restrict myself to the absence of discrete torsion for uh, simplicity. Right. So, what uh, important to us is that this theory has a modular space. And this is parameterized by the motion of the D3 brains in the transverse space, uh, which again is a C3 mod ZK. And um, say for a given choice of an N equals two subalgebra of N equals three, we can identify a Coulomb branch and this uh, will be associated to the motion of the D3 brains on a one complex dimensional slice of the transverse space, which will be C mod the ZK. Um, uh, sorry, Simon, right. can, I yeah. can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. So, so, how, so, so back to the previous slides. So how you pick up, the, pick out the Coulomb branch from the module space? So how know which, uh, say, you are looking for? Um, it will depend on the choice of n equals to subalgebra, right? So you have different choices of n equals to subalgebra of n equals three, which are related mm -hmm. by uh, elements of the yes, asymmetry group, or the SU3 asymmetry group. And um, oh, let me think about this. I mean, the, the uh, so, hmm? N equals three, the U3 asymmetry group is, um, it, it is actually just the rotations of C3. So you choose, yeah. rotate any oh, yeah. choice C within C3 by, by the R symmetry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So when you choose an N equals to subalgebra, you choose a SU2 times U1 um, subgroup of uh, the R symmetry, the mm -hmm. symmetry group, and uh, say the motion corresponding to the, the rotation corresponding to the U1, say, Asymmetry of the n equals to subalgebra will correspond to the, the Coulomb branch. Okay, thank you. That's okay. Thanks. Um, right. So uh, for now on, I will concentrate on uh, one example with the understanding that uh, then uh, this procedure can be applied to all the possible values of k and then um, all the possible number of d uh, three brains. And uh, as an example, I will consider the S fold with the uh, K equals three with the uh, trivial discrete torsion, as I said, and uh, with the three D3 brains probing uh, uh, this singularity. Um, so I, it is useful to picture this brain setup by looking at uh, the two transverse direction that uh, correspond to the Coulomb branch, well, uh, such that the motion of the D3 brain in this direction correspond to exploring the the Coulomb branch. And uh, we will look at the covering space of uh, spacetime. So in this picture, you can see in uh, light blue, there is the 
a choice of fundamental region under the space-time quotient. And uh, the fixed point is where the asphalt is located. And we have 3D3 brains plus the images under the asphalt projection. So the theory on this point of the column branch is U1 to the third and each Royan factor is associated to a volume theory of 1D3 brain. So I will, a general element of the charge lattice will be given, uh, will have charges under electrical energy charges under the first D3 brain, the second D3 brain, and the third D3 brain. Um, so our assumption for studying the charge lattice is that uh, a good representative of the charge lattice is given by the possible few strings that you can stretch between the three brains uh, in this covering space. With the understanding that uh, an F1 string will have electric charges and the one string magnetic charges. So for example, here, gamma one is a, a fundamental string and my convention is that uh, um, an outgoing uh, fundamental string will have positive electric charge and ingoing will have negative electric charge. Now you can also uh, stretch a PQ string between a brain and its image. And in this case, we have, it is important to remember that uh, the s projection also involves some element uh, of the S-duality group. Um, so for the um, uh, K equals 3 s this will be uh, rho 3. So, for example, gamma 3 will have charge uh, minus 1, 0 with respect to the first image of uh, the second D3 brain, which I don't know whether you can see through zoom, but I call the D3 2 prime. And so the charge under D3 2 will be related by an action of rho 3. So the charge under, sorry, the charge under D3 2 will be minus 1, comma 0 times rho 3 to the minus 1, which is. Uh, this matrix that I gave. And so it was out to be 1, 1. So the full, um, to the charge of uh, this, uh, oh, there is a typo here, sorry. This could be gamma 3. The charge of gamma 3 will be 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 0. So each uh, charge of this uh, associated to various PQ string will correspond to one point in the charge lattice. So what you do is uh, you consider all the possible uh, F1, D1, and in general, PQ string that you can stretch, you compute the charges, and this will generate the uh, charge lattice. And also you consider configuration with the multiple PQ string. And um, it turns out that this charge lattice form uh, a six dimensional lattice, so it is useful to write, it, uh, uh, write a basis for it. And uh, for this specific example, it turns out that uh, a good basis is given by the string that I gave in this picture. Now, the details are really not that important, but uh, you can compute uh, the charges of uh, each of these strings uh, by the in the way that I showed in the slide before. And the charge lattice will be given by the integer span of the discharges. Uh, right, so any questions about uh, um, this? Okay. Okay, so now we found uh, the information that we needed, which is the charge lattice, and uh, we can uh, apply the general uh, prescription by uh, Sebari and Del Zotto. So we have uh, a basis for the charge lattice and the uh, direct pairing. Uh, so a general computation uh, will look something like this. You write the most general line, uh, say the most general charge for a line with capital E, capital M, and then you impose mutual local equal constraint with respect to uh, all the charges in your charge lattice. Uh, now the, the, the repairing is linear, so it is enough to consider the constraint given by the basis of the charge lattice. And uh, then you compute uh, all the values of uh, E and M that are consistent uh, with uh, these constraints. And um, for example, in this, uh, uh, in this theory, it turns out that the most general line that is consistent uh, uh, with the mutual locality condition is given uh, by this formula, which with detail really doesn't matter that much by now. But uh, what matters is that uh, this uh, general line depends on two parameters, two independent parameters R and S, which can equal zero, one, or two. So we find that there are 
there is a three by three lattice of lines. And again, now I'm considering lines up to the insertion of local operators. So as you see, we find a finite dimensional lattice with the nine possible lines that are consistent with the, uh, the charge lattice of this unequal state theory. But uh, we are not done yet because in general, not local, you can compute their Dirac pairing and uh, it is in general not in an integer. So we get to choose a set of uh, maximal set of mutually local lines that are uh, each other. And um, the condition of locality you can write as SR prime and RS prime uh, with respect to the parameter that I introduced uh, the last slides. And um, each choice of a maximal set of this line will correspond to a global structure for the n equals three theory. Um, so it turns out that uh, in this case, there are three choices of global structures that are drew in the um, in usual way with the drawing the lattice. And uh, in each of these choices, you can compute that the one for symmetry is uh, Z3 and this acts by phase transformation on the lines. Right, so, um, I mean, any questions about uh, this result? So the main result uh, about uh, this specific example is that uh, there is a Z3 one for symmetry and there are four possible choices of global structures. And, and we can actually check this again uh, against the uh, result in the literature because uh, in 2020, Gabi Zafir gave uh, um, an N equals one theory that uh, is uh, believed to flow to a point in the conformal manifold of uh, this theory that we just looked at. Uh, so um, as I said at the beginning, uh, one for symmetry should be robust under the formations. And therefore we can compare the one for symmetry with that we just found with our procedure with the one for symmetries that uh, are known for this N plus one theory and already that were considered by Gabi. And uh, it turns out that uh, this theory, that uh, the results match. So this theory indeed has a Z3 one for symmetry and uh, with the four possible choices of global structure. So this gives a non-trivial match uh, of uh, our result. Simone? Yes. Do you, if you go back to the previous slide. Sure. Do you make a distinction between the, uh, the top two? Um, right, that's a good point. And uh, no, at this point, there is no distinction that you can really make because uh, this lattice is written in terms of these two parameters, R and S, but um, there is no special, so this is given in terms of a basis of the lattice, but there is no nothing special about this basis. So, so the, there's an additional symmetry which exchanges S and R. Uh, we will discuss uh, some of these global structure turn out to be equivalent, uh, but uh, from this point of view, these are different choices of global structure, uh, as I that are drawn in a, in a given basis for the lattice. Uh, but there, no, there is nothing special about the first two with respect to the second two. No, I mean, I mean the fact that I'm, I'm looking at the... the oh, right. Uh, the, the exchange of, SNR of the x-axis and the y-axis. Okay, no, from this point of view, no, because these, uh, the line is not invariant and the exchange of R and S. Um, so it's not invariant, but it's not visible in this lattice that you draw, because the lattice is invariant. Uh, right, yeah, I mean, the lattice is invariant if you exchange R with S, but uh, this is not uh, a of your system, uh, I mean, right now there is no reason to believe that you can exchange these two axes without uh, changing uh, the physics, right? But in, in uh, any these are two different parameters, sorry? In any lattice, you could just relabel what you call the axis, right? It doesn't mean that the whatever the lattice corresponds to has that as a symmetry. Yes, exactly. So, okay, the usual pictures for gauge theories, uh, uh, in that case, you actually have a distinction between uh, a physical interpretation of what should be on the x-axis and on the y-axis. And this is given in terms of 
which lines are uh, Wilson line with respect to the non-abelian gauge group and which line are to top line. But in this case, there was no gauge group, so there is no invariant way to say what uh, you would call electric or what you would call magnetic. But nevertheless, these four lattices are distinct lattices. In distinct, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, the graph does not reflect it. Sure it does. They're, they look different. One has the R, R and S are just some parameterization of the of his basis. And one has uh, guys along the, the R axis filled and one has the guys along the S axis filled. Okay, and what, what is the operation R exchange with S? That's just a re-parameterization. He's using R and S as, as a way of parameterizing. And is this a symmetry of the of the problem or not? Uh, we'll discuss maybe later. Um, so, exchange RNS will correspond to a I mean a linear map on the line lattice, and uh, but that's it. The, for, for now, there is no no reason to believe that this will be a symmetry of uh, your theory, right? Mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, it's just a reparameterization, but. Uh, Given a, a choice of basis for this lattice, these are different sub lattices. Okay. Does that uh, answer? Uh, I will come back to this uh, uh, in a few slides. Okay. Uh, so, any other questions? Good. Um, um, so, as I said, we just one specific example, but uh, this idea can be generalized to all possible values of k and uh, all ranks. And so let me just give you the um, general answer. So in the case of without uh, any discrete torsion, uh, it turns out that uh, the one for symmetries do not, and the number of global structure do not depend on the rank, but they will depend on k. And for k equals three, uh, as we just uh, seen, uh, the one for symmetry is a three, and we have four possible group of structure. And this result will actually hold uh, regardless of the rank. We just looked at the case of rank equals three, but uh, the result does not depend on the rank. And then for k equals four, the one for symmetry is z two, and uh, we have uh, three possible group of structure. While for k equals six, the one for symmetry is trivial, and there is only one possible group of structure. And we can actually do another non-trivial check of this procedure uh, because. Uh, these theories uh, were at rank two are known to enhance to any plus four super symmetry. And this was analyzed by uh, Ronin Tachikawa. And in particular, the case k equals three enhances to SU3 and equals four super Yam Mills. And uh, you can see that uh, this, uh, and indeed this theory is known to have Z3 one for symmetry and four global structures. While uh, for k equals four, this enhances to SO5 uh, and equals four. And again, the one for symmetry is global structure match. And for k equals six, uh, we get the G2 n equals four. And again, also for this theory, we find a, a, a match of our results. Um, Can I ask I a know. question about this? So, yes, so, so here, here you have the one form symmetries, they are cyclic groups, and the number of global structures is always um, the sum of the divisors of the, of the number, of the order of the cyclic group. And in the case where this comes from gauge theories, like what you say about n equal four, this is um, it's easy, it's easy to prove because then the one form symmetry is the center of the gauge group, and then you, you prove this. So would you do you know if this is expected that for any like if I find any theory with a D3 one form symmetry, I will always have four global structures? Is this always the case, or is it just a coincidence that it maps? Um I do believe that this should be a general feature uh, in four dimensions. Um, I cannot give you a, an, an argument of without the top of my head. Without super symmetry? Do you know the result on two dimensional lattices that there is, is the different set of uh, sub lattices is the, what you just said? Right? Yeah, yeah. So the, in the gauge theory, indeed, it's the sub lattices of order n of, uh, of Zn square. These are classified by the sum of divisors. So this I know, but then. This, here it's a bit more general. We just know the one form symmetry is uh, Z3, for instance. And do we know, is there an argument for why 
the I number should still counter, be the same. I think there's a counter example actually already in n equals four. Uh, the the d even I think have z two cross z two um, one form symmetry, but they have fifteen uh, global structures. Yes, yeah, so that's why I was restricted myself to uh, cyclic. Ah, uh, uh, I see. One form, yeah. But yes, of course, there's this. Uh, but okay, I, I, it was just out of curiosity if there is a if there is a general expectation that I'm missing or if it's just a... well, I, uh, as long as uh, I'm sorry, I was just going to say um, with with respect to to Philip's um, counter example, of course, the d even whether it's uh, z two cross z two or z four, um, though that that depends on on the rank, but I don't. Remember off the top of my head the number of global structures in the case of, of Z4. I'm not sure if it's. But for, for Z4, it's, it's uh, for SO6, it definitely matches with SU4. So I guess it, if it doesn't depend on the rank, then it should be. Yeah, no, I think the Z4 ones, which are the D. Z4 should give seven. The odd are, are seven, but the, yeah. but the D even, which are Z2 cross Z2, had. 15 or something like that. Right, right, thank you. Um, can I make a comment maybe or the question? Uh, so I didn't catch that. Sorry, uh, uh, just a comment on the question. Yep. Um, so the argument is not Lagrangian, it's, it's a non-Lagrangian argument. So you can, uh, you get the same structure of global forms. You can see okay. this, for example, constructing the same TFT. There will be a BF theory, and then you're classifying okay. up boundary conditions. So the problem you're you're solving is the same in both cases. Okay. So whenever the one-form symmetry is a ZN, there will be some of the divisors of N of global and structures. There's a there's a subtlety which is you have to know something about the pairing uh, yeah. of of your generators. In these two cases here, set two and set three, there's a unique perfect pairing, so the answer is unique. Mm -hmm. um, in, in in more general, when this thing is not prime, there's more than one pairing possible. Or, and then you have to compute it somehow. I see. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, so, any other questions on on what has been discussed so far? Uh, sorry, I have a question related to this. So, you said yes. some some uh, global form you can get it from gauging of some of some of these of uh, these one form symmetry, right? Like um four yeah you can at least in gauge theories you do expect to be able to gauge the one for symmetry and get a different global forms yeah and meaning that these are this is... anomalous right yes exactly okay thank you i think that the cane in general have a mixed anomaly with zero form symmetries but this can happen but uh oh, they yeah, should happen. be able to gauge what are the zero form symmetry in this? Uh, uh, um, so the zero form symmetry, uh, uh, they, they are the ones that have been studied by Yaron in Tachikawa, and they are uh, cyclic groups. Uh, they turns out to be uh, yeah, ZN groups. Um, I don't remember on the, off the top of my head exactly which uh, group. But, uh... OK, thank you. Thanks. All right. So that we have a general result for the one for symmetry. So let us look at uh, what uh, we can do with it. And one interesting uh, thing that we can do is uh, the following. So our brain setup, so let's, let's go back to our simple example. And uh, our brain setup is obviously invariant under the exchange of brains or the exchange of images of brains. Um, but we can see that this is a non-trivial action uh, on the charge lattice and in general on the charges. So for example, in our example, if uh, we exchange uh, the second D3 with its image, then this corresponds to, for example, exchanging gamma one and gamma three. And in general, this will act uh, non-trivially on the, all the charges in your charge lattice and will act with uh, as a linear map. And for, I guess for the expert, uh, this set of transformation do form uh, are elements of the complex crystallographic uh, Neverkron group that is associated to the N plus three theory. And this group acts uh, non-trivially on uh, the charge lattice. 
So the charge lattice as a whole is uh, invariant under this transformation. But what you can do is uh, extend it by linearity to the line lattice, which is a more refined lattice. And what you find is that, uh, in general, the various traces of global structure are not invariant under this transformation. So what uh, will happen? What happens uh, is that uh, the lines that belong to a choice of global structure will be mapped to lines that belong to another global structure. So this transformation effectively exchanges global structure between themselves. Um, so in, in the example of the S3 fold that we looked at, you can see you can find that uh, the first three choices of global structure are all mapped between each other by some uh, of this transformation while the fourth choice of global structure is completely invariant under this transformation. And these are two consequences. The first one is uh, that uh, the first three global structure are actually equivalent, as uh, Ami was uh, discussing before. But uh, the, the way to, uh, I see a question, uh, probably. Oh, yeah, I just was going to let you finish before I interrupted. That's what OK. I uh, so you popped up in my Zoom. OK, uh, so the first three choices of global structure are not invariant under this transformation, and they are mapped to each other, and therefore they are equivalent, because this transformation is a symmetry of your brain setup. So you should map uh, uh, the, a theory to another theory which is equivalent. Well, the fourth one is uh, uh, invariant under these symmetries. So in general, it can be physically different from, from the first uh, three. OK. Um, can could I, is this a good place? So yeah, I, I'm a little confused by this whole interpretation of this as a symmetry. If you think about this, this, this uh, interchanging uh, D3 brain positions, this is a, this is a motion in the, in the moduli space. And what you're doing is you're doing some sort of monodromy. You're taking, you're starting from some point in the monod, uh, in the moduli space, following a path and coming back to the, that point. And you're saying that if you, uh, if you uh, drag uh, one of your maximal line lattices, one of your mutually local line lattices along this thing, you come back to a different mutually local line lattice. And so you can't have both of them because the, they, they, were, they were maximal. They, they were the maximal mutually local line lattice. And if you, if you started with one, dragged it, and came back to a, la a different mutually local line lattice, those would then be non, the, the starting and the final one would be non mutually local. So it sounds to me more that you're finding an obstruction to a global, a global on the, on the moduli space obstruction to, to, the, to this choice of a of a maximal line lattice. Okay. So, so I'm wondering uh -huh. maybe I'm wondering whether this could be thought of as saying that in this n equals three theory, it does not admit a a a, a maximal choice of a consistent maximal choice of of probe line operators, and it must be thought of as a as a non principally uh, as a theory with a non-principally polarized Dirac pairing, not a maximal one. OK, that's a very good question. So first of all, I, I don't believe that this is an abstraction, meaning this transformation is not an abstraction for the first three choices of uh, global structures. And for example, if you consider the case, so we consider the case of rank three, but uh, as I said, these results are actually do not depend on the rank. So if you consider the case of rank two, uh, you will have a similar situation. We will have the same situation, but we know that this theory enhances to any equal force uh, super here means we gauge group SU3. And, uh, and we know that, that in SU3, there are four choices of global structure, and uh, all of them are perfectly fine choices of line lattices. Um, so my main point here is that uh, there are four choices of principally uh, polarized uh, lattices, but uh, what uh, falls apart is not uh, the fact that they are principal, 
maximal. Say. Uh, what falls apart is the fact that they are invariant at the, the, the CCRG. So the first three choices uh, do not provide a, a maximal um, polarized uh, uh, extension of the charge lattice. Well, they do provide a maximal general, a maximal polarized extension of the charge lattice, but this will not be invariant under the full CCRG. While the fourth one will give you a, a refinement, a, a maximal refinement of uh, uh, your charge lattice, which is also invariant under the full CCRG. Um, but yeah, I, I would say the, the, the so, main... Uh, my, my, I, think, I think the situation is a little bit different at rank two, which happens to be the n equals four theory. Um, um, so in the n equals four theory, uh, because now there's sorry. a whole there's a whole conformal manifold, and I think, um, I mean, you, you seem to run into this problem just when you're if you were trying to interpret the the rank two theory just at this special value of the coupling. But in general, this motion will also do a motion in the conformal manifold, and you won't get a you won't get an obstruction. All you'll find is that these different maximal line lattices are in the same s duality orbit. Uh, yeah. That is true. If you if you actually have the full conformal manifold on n equals four, then uh, all these line lattices are equal, but are equivalent. Sorry, under s duality. But okay, so the equivalent situation in n equals four would be that uh, you get a group of n equals four su three, and uh, and Aaron and Tachikawa showed that uh, you 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 engineer this at a special value of the coupling, which is e to the two pi i over three. And at this point, say the symmetries of your charge lattice are the Y group of SU3, as well as a subgroup of S duality, because at this point of the conformal manifold, actually you have, yeah, there is a Z3 subgroup of S duality generated by ST, which becomes a symmetry of the theory. So this is your full symmetry of the lattice. But it turns out that uh, some, uh, and it is known that some of the choices of global structure are not invariant under this full symmetry. In that case, in the say, n equals four formulation, what happens is that uh, some of the global structure are not invariant at the, the subgroup of S duality. But uh, from the n equals three perspective, from the n equals three construction, you really see the vial group together with the ST as, as duality so group uh, as just uh, a single, yeah, uh, you see them together, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't know whether this answers, mm -hmm. but also, for example, at rank three, uh, even then we have uh, uh, a check against the n equals one Lagrangian by Gabian. Even then we expect uh, that there are three consistent choices of global structures. So still, I don't think that this should uh, give an abstraction for these global structures. And maybe we can discuss more. Yeah, sure. But thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Well, thanks for the question. Inyaki, you had a raised hand. Uh, yes, but I was going to say pretty much what Simone just said. So it was, it was okay. Okay, so how much time do I have left? 10 minutes, more or less? Sure. Okay. 10 minutes for sure. You have lots of questions. So I, let's, let's see how it goes. Yeah, no, my 10 minutes will, should, be, should be more than enough. That's half. perfect then. Good. Um, okay, so coming back to our situation, um, as I said, one of the uh, one of the consequences of uh, having this transformation that uh, map uh, different global structures is that three of the global structures are actually equivalent. But there is another consequence that we can understand, and this in terms of uh, possibility of, of having uh, uh, non-invertible symmetries. So. As I said, this transformation um, do map uh, global symmetries between each other, but uh, we, we can actually consider this transformation and couple it uh, to a uh, gauging of uh, the one for symmetry that brings you back to the original global structure. And the combination of these the two operations, which will be a, a transformation that is well defined in a given global structure, and it turns out that. Uh, this will generate, this will be a, a symmetry of this theory. And uh, a similar 
um, similar construction of uh, such uh, uh, symmetry defect uh, run back to the self-duality defect by Kammers and Vanya. And have been uh, a really prolific topic uh, uh, of, uh, of research in the last few years. Uh, so, um, extending to n equals three and n equals four and other dimensionality. And so again, you expect to be able to combine one of these transformations with a gauging of the one for symmetry. The combination of the two should be a symmetry of your theory, but uh, the drawback, I mean, the, the, the catch is that uh, this uh, symmetry will not be invertible, which means that if you try to combine multiple defects that generate this symmetry, the combination between them will not be will not follow a group structure in general, because but uh, they will follow a more general fusion uh, fusion structure. They will follow general fusion rules, and um, so in particular, such defect uh, will not have uh, an inverse. This is why this type of symmetry is called the uh, non-invertibles. And uh, I mean there are a lot of papers uh, on this topic, but uh, maybe the closest uh, example that where you can consider is the analogous situation in equals four uh, that are actually uh, introduced uh, from, the, from the question by Philip. And in this case, it is not that at some specific point of the conformal manifold, there are some uh, self-duality defects which are constructed in a similar way. You have uh, what should be a symmetry, what is a symmetry of your local dynamics, uh, but um, which is given by an element of S-duality it becomes a symmetry of a specific point of the conformal manifold. And you can combine this with a gauging of the one for symmetry. And uh, this combination will give rise to a sim again, an uninvertible symmetry defect. Um, so what we found uh, is that uh, in our example is that uh, for the first three choices of global structure, we uh, expect to be able to construct uh, such a uh, non-invertible defect by combining uh, one of the action uh, that I just talked about with a, a proper gauging of the one for symmetry. That, brings you back to the original global structure. While uh, for, the fourth, uh, for the fourth choice of uh, global structure, you do not expect uh, such uh, non-invertible defects. And um, a similar situation will appear in, uh, uh, in the S4, uh, so in the K plus four uh, S fold. In that case, uh, there are three possible Joker structure and two of them we expect them to have uh, a non-invertible symmetry. Okay, so let me wrap everything up. So um, today we uh, I showed you a possible way to tackle the computation of orthon symmetry in uh, no Lagrangian theory, in particular in S fold theories. And the final result is given here in this table. And I, I can add the, the last column, which is the number of inequivalent global structures. Uh, so uh, again, as I said, the, the global structure related by the transformation are equivalent. So in the case of the S3, you only get two choices that are physically uh, different. And um, this also let us understand the possible presence of non-invertible symmetries, in, in particular only in the case of the S3 and the S4-fold without uh, discrete torsion. And just to complete the picture, even though today I have not talked about the presence of discrete torsion, in our paper we do, and in uh, all these cases, uh, we found that the one for symmetry is uh, trivial. And uh, let me emphasize again that uh, uh, it is very nice that we found a perfect match uh, of our result with the uh, holographic picture uh, analysis by Iñaki and collaborators. Um, so wh where can we go from here? Um, one uh, interesting topic is, uh, and actually is a work in progress with the same group is to uh, analyze uh, one for symmetry is an exceptional S fold. So this would be S fold introduced in the second paper by uh, Essebaria and uh, Regalado. Uh, another interesting topic is to lower symmetry supersymmetry. I look at uh, N equals two S fold that were instead introduced by Apuzzi, Giacomelli, and Shafir Namiki, essentially by also considering uh, additional seven brains to uh, the brain setup. And um, this last one is a bit of pseudophysics, but uh, the, this procedure is um, specific to n equals four to d equals four, but it would be interesting to see whether a uh, similar procedure can be used to analyze theories in other one for symmetries of theories in other dimensions. Um, all right, right. So this wraps up my talk. So thank you, thank you again. If you have any other question, feel free to to ask. 
Right, let's thank Simone. Thank you. More questions? What do you think? I wanted to know if Aki on this program. Well, maybe I'll wait until the question. I didn't yeah. catch it. I don't know whether it's a question. Uh, I didn't hear it. Sorry. Um, I'll wait. Yeah, maybe I can, I can ask a, a question. Which so I'm not totally sure. I I understood what is the status of the move when you exchange the like. If you can go back to the slides where you ex yeah. So th this thing here. So is it correct? Uh, so we 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 talked also uh, beforehand about this with. Uh, with Philip in particular, and, and we were a bit confused about the status of this move when you exchange the two the two D three brains. Is it correct to say that you are not? Um, it's not a move that you can implement by keeping the same definition of the Coulomb branch as a as an n equal two subalgebra. Because if you identify the a D three and a D three prime, you have to change all three complex coordinates of the C three. So you cannot stay at the same value of, of um, yeah, you know, of two of them. And so yeah, mm -hmm. I was a bit confused with the status of this exchange, actually. What is it, what does it mean like physically? Actually, uh, no, yeah. Ah, sorry, maybe Philip uh, wants to. No, no, I, it, it's possible for two of the, coordinates to be at zero that is if, yeah at zero. of course if they are at zero then so if if your coulomb branch slice is say z1 equals z2 equals zero slice of the of the c3 then this is a move within that remaining slice so i yeah it can be understood as a monogamy just purely from within a within an n equals two coulomb branch slice of the whole n equals three coulomb branch that's yes, 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 okay. Um, yeah, I mean, at the end, these are elements of the CCRG of your theory. So yeah, they will be related to more of this around. Uh, okay, okay, no, but yeah, you're, you're right. That if, you're, if you're on the zero plane, then, then it's, uh, yeah. So, so, so this move, this exchange is really in terms of the of the n equal to Coulomb branch. It's just um, a monodromy around the the origin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In, in the rank one example, I that's think, what, uh, in the higher rank example, of course, you're moving one right. of the three brains and not the other one. So you're. Yeah. The, so, so that, that yeah, yeah, my question was about the in in the higher rank, like you exchange. Only two of them, and and um... yeah, yeah, you can consider as like that only parameters by the motion of one of the d3s, and then uh, if you only move one d3 at once, right? Um, yeah, uh, so sorry, yeah, your, your modular space will be bigger, right? Uh, higher dimensionality, but you have a uh, complex dimension one slice of the Coulomb branch will correspond to the motion of one d3 brain, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can consider monodromies around the origin just on this slice of the Coulomb branch. But so is the statement that in the R-dimensional Coulomb branch, it's a motion, you're really just um, moving from, from a point to itself around some... some uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, a point in the Coulomb branch is completely identified by, say, um, position of uh, the, all the little brains. So at the beginning and the end of this motion, uh, all the position of all the brains are the same, right? Mm. Uh, and so, yeah, but uh, you you move around a, mo a monogamy. Uh, yeah, you move around, sorry, a, a cycle. Okay, of, okay. so that, that's the state. The okay. column branch. I think I'm, I'm also confused, so um, <laughs> sorry. My question is very confused, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, and, and just in general, I'm, I'm just confused about the idea of, of um, the, uh, a monodromy, the effect of dragging this, the structure around a closed loop in, in, in the uh, moduli space, of thinking of that as a symmetry from the field theory point of view. 
I understand it looks like a symmetry from the string point of view. Uh, anyway, I'm always these things. No, always... uh, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't consider it a symmetry, like a zero form symmetry in the filtery point of view. So what I'm just saying is that since the brain uh, setup is the same, you do expect that uh, before and after this move, you do engineer the same uh, theory, right? Okay. Oh, so I misunderstood. So you're not advocating that this should be thought of as a zero form symmetry in the field theory then? Okay. No. Okay. No, 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 right. Um, yeah. So uh, I had a, a question about similar to kind of this interpretation of this N equals two Coulomb branch. Um, so if, if I think of like the usual cyborg Witten story, then of course I should think of the, the Coulomb branch as uh, carrying like a flat SL2Z bundle. Is the story here that I should think of the Coulomb branches carrying like a flat bundle of the CCRG? So that way I'm picking up the monodromies valued in the CCRG, is that the, the general story or is it a little bit different? I think you should, uh, so for sure you can think of the Coulomb branches carrying a, fib um, a bundle with which fibers are the charge lattice. Yeah. Right. So as you go around monodomies, so as you go around monodomies, the charge lattice will be acted on upon by a linear transformation, uh, which is corresponds to the monodromy on the charge lattice. But the point is that when you extend this by linearity to the line lattices, then uh, this uh, transformation will map different choices of global structure. Uh, so, yeah. Both the line lattice, like the lattice of all possible joining lines. And the charge lattice are invariant have a monogamy around the, this, but the, the different choices of uh, line lattices, which are sorry, sub lattices of the line lattices. So the different global structure are in general not invariant under this monogamy. Right. Okay. Does that, does that answer? Yeah. So I, I guess what I what what I'm wondering about is is thinking about, you know, if, if I think of in the n equals four case, I have this like duality frame. And so even there, when I'm going around uh, monodromies, I have this kind of change in my duality frame. And so I was wondering if I should think of the CCRG as, as like a duality frame in this n equals three case, or, I, or if it doesn't really admit I that. Think that. I think you the analogy is more that the CCRG plays the role of the vial group in any Right, group. okay. So I kind of think it's not carried as a, as a, as a linear structure, right? Right, okay, thank you. More questions? May I ask uh, you uh, some questions regarding um, non-invertible symmetry, please? Uh, yes. So is it rank dependent or if you start from rank two, which is n equal to four and the nature of uh, non-invertible defects are the same, uh, right, so the, we didn't work out the full uh, fusion algebra for this non-invertible symmetry, so I, uh, I cannot tell you whether this invertible symmetry is exactly the same, but uh, the, the situation of having uh, three global structure map between each other, say in the threefold, and one that uh, stays, uh, say, on its own, this is independent of the rank. This uh, will always happen at any rank. For example, so in the three, you always find uh, the sorry both, huh? the 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 one that has Z three. You always have uh, both triality defect and uh, duality defect and triality defect. Am I right? Like n equal to four as U three. Um, you three. should think of uh, the the rank two case as n equals four as U three, but only at uh, tau equals two pi i over three, because this is the and you the that you engineer from the asphalt uh, construction. So you will have the triality defect. Uh, uh, ah, only okay, I see, okay. So only triality defect. Yeah, something, let's uh, say a generalization if you want to. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. More questions for Simone? Well, let's, I'd say let's thank them again. 
Thank you for the nice talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much again.